This is the first exam from the semester for Math 1630. We're given the monthly supply and demand for a video game console, and we're given that information in a graph, and then we're asked several questions about that. So the first thing we want to do is to examine the graph a lot more closely. So here's what the graph looks like. We can see pretty clearly on the graph that we can figure out what the y-intercept is for the supply curve. It's at zero, which makes sense because if the selling price is zero, then the manufacturers are not making any of them. And if the selling price is zero, the demand might be high, but they're not able to find any, so they're willing probably to pay quite a bit to begin with. But then as time goes on, the demand decreases because the price increases to a point they're no longer willing to pay that much. And the point that we're interested in there is going to be the break-even point. Now we could try to guess what the break-even point is by looking at the graph, trying to follow the Y intersection back to what appears to be somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. And the X intercept appears to be maybe around 530, 540 dollars selling price but that's not very accurate so what we're going to do and what I have done to help us here is I have actually created a picture of the graph so that I can write on it and the first thing I'm going to point out is what we do know about the um, supply at price P is as I said the Y intercept is at zero zero And because we know the y-intercept is at 0, 0, we know that in the equation y equals mx plus b, that the value of b is going to be 0. What we don't know is we don't know exactly what the slope is. So we're going to have to do a little uh, guessing about that. So in order to do that, I'm going to... try to figure out what the point is that's right there. And I try to follow that back to the x-axis because that's not a very far distance. And I see that at a price of 100, it seems that approximately 250 perhaps are going to be um, demanded. I can also kind of verify that because if you look closely, you see these little blue lines, each represent 100. So there's 100, 200, 300. So maybe about 300. It's gone up to about 300. I know that it's not 500 because 500, if I follow the blue line across, 500 is above where that point is. So I'm going to assume that point. is let's say about 200. Oops. Need the eraser now. Back to the pen and that is the point 100. Zero. Ah, sorry. Not 100, zero. We'll erase that. It's 100, comma, we decided probably about 300. And with this information, and the information from the original point, we can find the slope. The slope is equal to 300. minus zero over one hundred minus zero. Remember when you're calculating slope you always want the y's on top 
So this is a Y value, this is a Y value, and you want the X's on the bottom. This is an X value, this is an X value. And that the coordinates of each point actually have to stay lined up over the top of one another in the equation, and you're going to be subtracting in the right order. So what we have here is 300 minus 0 is 300, over 100 minus 0 is 100, and 300 over 100 gives us a slope of 3. So the line of the supply, S of P, is equal to 3 times P, and then plus 0 for the y-intercept, or simply S of P equals 3P. And I'm going to change colors here to do the demand so that we don't get them mixed up. We're going to try to do the same thing with the demand curve. We can tell here that the y-intercept is approximately 0, and then that's 4,100, 4,200, 4,300. So this point is 0. And that tells us once again that the value of B in Y equals MX plus B is going to be about $4,300. And now we need a slope, so we're going to try to follow this down. So where x is 100, it appears that the y value is approximately So calculating slope, we have 3,800 divided by, or minus 4,300, sorry about that. And that's divided by 100 minus 0. So the slope is going to be negative 500 over 100. Which is going to equal negative 5. So now with y equals mx plus b, we know that our demand equation, d of p, where d is taking the place of y and p is taking the place of x, d of p is going to be negative 5 times p plus 4,300. And at this point, I'm going to try to get the graphing calculator to help me out, but we'll return first to the problem and see what we can answer, if anything. So we're going to go back to the problem, close the graph, and it says, Describe how the increased selling price of an item affects consumer demand and producer supply. 
If the selling price of an item is higher than it should be, the consumer demand for the item is going to decrease. They don't want to pay a high price for the item. And then the producer's willingness to supply it is also is going to increase because higher prices means they make more money. But of course there is going to be a point of what's called diminishing returns, which means they're going to supply a lot more and the demand is going to be less. So the formulas that we have come up with are pretty much the same as what these are. D of P is negative 5P plus 4300. S of P is 3P. And that's what we see here. So it says, suppose the price of a video game console is set at $500 each. How many consoles are suppliers willing to make? How many consoles are consumers willing to buy? At a price of $500, is there a shortage or is there a surplus? Well, we'll turn to the graphing calculator to help us out with that. Get our equations back up here. And I think we'll just go with the equations from the problem here since they're easier to read. So we're going to go to y equals. Actually, we don't need to go to y equals. We can do it straight from here. So at a price of 500, the supply is going to be 3 times 500. And they're willing to supply 1,500 units of the console. But the demand is 4,300 minus 5 times the price of 500. And that's going to be 1,800. So the demand is for 1,800, but the supply is only 1,500. So suppliers are willing to produce 1,500 consoles. Consumers are willing to purchase 1,800 consoles. So there's a shortage of consoles in the market. They're willing to buy more than what are available. Part D says, suppose the uh, price is set at 100. And notice here, just looking at the graph, at 100, the supply is much lower than the demand. And that's because the price is cheap. People are willing to buy but the, the supply isn't able to keep up with it. So the supply at $100 is going to be 300 The demand at $100 is going to be 3800 So there's actually a shortage of 3500 So at a price of 100, suppliers are willing to produce 300 consoles. Consumers are willing to purchase 3,800, so there is a shortage of consoles on the market. Then what they want to know is what's the equilibrium price and what is the equilibrium quantity. The best way to get that is to go to your graph and graph your supply and demand. And given that we have a graph to kind of go by and know where the equilibrium is going to be, we're going to set our X values to go from zero to about $900 and our Y values, we're going to set those to go from zero to about $5,000.
Sorry for the pause. I had to realize what I had done uh, on the screen because I wasn't getting the right graph. I had entered 300x instead of just 3x for the supply value. And in fact, it should have been 3x as shown there. So when I graph now, this is the window that I use, 0 to 900 for x by 100s, 0 to 5,000 for y by 100s. And on the graph, I do see a graph that looks very, very similar to what I see in the problem. And I need to find this intersection point. So I'm going to hit second, trace to access the calc menu. Go down to number five to find the intersection point. Hit enter. Choose both curves and then let it guess where the intersection is. And it says the intersection is at 537.5 and 1612.5. So what does that mean in terms of the problem? Well, that means that the equilibrium price is $537.50 per console. And the equilibrium quantity, since I can't have half of a quantity, then I have to actually have the equilibrium quantity is at 613 consoles, round up from 612.5. And that is the correct answer.